church, Bwana asifiwe. Nipungie ni mkono Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Kwa sababu leo ni siku jema Bwana ametuwezesha to be in the house of the Lord. There is no any other better praise you could have been this morning. It's only in the presence of the Lord where you are blessed, where you are lifted, where you are encouraged. I tell you it's only in the house of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. And I was telling the Lord, thank you that we have just come from, you know, you know celebrating Easter. Si tulikuwa tunasherekea Easter. And God is so good when we think about the resurrection, you know, the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we, you know, we remembered that all that Jesus went through for us. We cannot be down. We cannot dare be down anymore. Bona asifiwe, knowing that Jesus conquered for us. And the word of God says that in the Hebrews 12 verse 2, that our Lord Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, you know, he endured the cross, despising the shame. Because of you and me. Bwana Sifiwe. Imagine he despised, you know, he endured the cross. The cross was not easy. But because of his love for us, for humanity, he went through for us. He despised, you know, that shame. And I was asking the Lord, as I am born again in Salome, what am I despising? What am I putting aside that I may serve the Lord? What is that that I am saying? It is not going to hold me. If Jesus despised that shame, if he went through the cross, all the pain for my sake, even me, there are some things I cannot let them hold, get hold on me and hinder me from serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. My name is Salome Waidera Wamudoi. I'm born again. I love the Lord. Um, my husband is up there. I was trying to... Yes, his name is David Mudoi. And between me and him, we are blessed with four wonderful daughters. <laughs> Amen, amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, media team. And I have my family in the house. I have all my daughters in the house. Oh, amen. You can see them. They are there. They are, I have oh, I have Brilliant, and then I have Raha and Zawadi. Those are twins. Can you clap for them? <laughs> amen. One is not there. There is the first one, Magdalene, is not there. But we are blessed of the Lord. One has a few. many tambua. Amen. And I'm Salome Waidira Mudoi, and I love the Lord. Let us go into the word of the Lord. I know God is here to bless us because he never gathers. He has never, and he will never gather his people in vain. He always has something for his people. Uh, we are going to read from the, from the book of Micah, Micah chapter 2, from verse 12 to 13. Yes. We can read together. I will surely... Verse 13. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to entitle my message, We Shall Break Through. Tell your partner, we shall break through. Yes, we are going to break through for the glory of God. And uh, as I was preparing and asking, you know, just preparing for the sermon and asking the Lord what he wants with us this morning, uh, this is the word that came to my, that God put in my heart, that this is our season to break through. And when, uh, when the, the prophet of God, Micah or Micah, depending, when the prophet of God, Micah, was, he was used by God to, to give prophecy to the children of Israel. If you read in the book of Micah, the book of Micah is one of the minor books in the Bible. It has only seven chapters. And uh, when Micah, the prophet of God, God spoke to him, telling him about his, you know, telling him about the things that are going to happen. God was speaking to, to, to Micah, and he was telling him about two things, that there was going to be judgment in the house of Israel. And then there's also, he was also speaking about hope. And also there was about, about repentance and also about restoration. And you see, the Bible says that uh, the, the, the verse that we have just, you can, you can, the verse you can put for us, uh, verse 13 in, KJ, in, in KJV version. Micah was used by God to tell his, the people of Israel that God was going to punish them for their disobedience, 
for their rebellion and the for oppression of the weak. There was so much that was happening in, the, in that time. And that is why God alikuwa napatia Mika the prophecy. And he was telling him, tell my people. Because they had disobeyed. They had not walked according to the, to, the, to the ways of God. There was a lot of sin in the nation. And Mika was telling them that there is going to be, they are going to be, they are going to be punished because of their disobedience, rebellion, oppression of the weak, and even the innocent. All their godly behaviors, God pronounced a judgment. And he said that they, with the judgment that was to be there is that those people, they were be to be ruled by wicked people who are to destroy their nation. And it was not easy for these people because Micah was a prophet. That time, there was a lot of economic empowerment, but spiritually, people were suffering. There, were, there was no righteousness in the land. And so Mika, for him to prophesy, it was not so easy because people were really against. They were thinking as if they have it all. But God used Mika to tell the people that this time they are going to suffer the judgment because of the things that they had done. And as, as I was looking into the, into the word of God, I saw how it was so devastating. Imagine a church like now. These are the times that, you know, those people, they are people of God. They were the children of God, the children of Israel, the chosen one. And now they are being told about the oppression that is going to take place. For sure, it was not an easy thing. I could imagine how they were feeling. How, what will become of us? Is God is against us. What will become of us? But the same word, Micah was also asked, you know, used by the Lord to bring hope to the people of God. And I was telling the Lord, because we are the church, we are the people of God, we are the Israelites of today, what can God be speaking of us? Where can we have maybe missed the point or missed the mark? Where can we be doing things that the same people in, in the times of Micah, in the times of, in that, mostly in Jerusalem and Samaria, that time, that is the, the nations where, where Micah was giving the prophecy. What are the kind of the things that we might be doing that we can be in the same situation, on the same state, kama vile hawa tu alikuwa? And the Bible says that the, 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 the word of God came to, to Micah. If you, if you read the book of Micah chapter 2 and verse 1. Because the land was full of sin. Can you project for us Mika 2 1? Or to those who devise, can we read together? So, watch Ikai Hapo for a while. Yes, there was a lot of evil that time. And even for us today, there is also a lot of evil in our land. And this is what the, the Bible is saying. At the all to those, wale ambao wanapanga maovu. Yani, they plan. You know, there is God hates sin. Sin ukweli. God hates sin. But there is another worse sin. The sin that is called premeditated sin. Yani, ile dhambi ambao umeka na ukaipangia. Ukasema ya kwamba hivi na hivi nitafanya. And this is what was happening to these people. These people, they were planning all to those who devise iniquity and work out evil on their beds. They were planning. It was a sin that was premeditated. Yan unapanga nitafanya maovu. And in the morning, because it is in your power, you do it. Knowing that nobody is seeing you, but our God is in heaven. asifiwe, And he could see what these people were doing. And that, that's why God was releasing judgment to these people. And the Bible says, you know, owe oh, unto them, because their end will still come. So there was a lot of evil in the land. There was a lot of oppression. And this is the same thing that is happening to us. When we look even to our nation, the days that we were living in, Zambi Eco, there is a lot of sin. People, there is murder. There is oppression of the weak. Poor leadership corruption, idolatry, all those premeditated. And these sins, they are being, some of them, they are happening even in the church of Christ. We don't say they're only the outside people who are doing it. All of us, me and I, we are involved in all this. And so God used Mika to tell the people also how he's going to, how he's going to restore them and what he's going to do. 
Because I was looking, the time that we are living in, you know, not everything that has been legalized that is righteous. Can you query? Not everything. There are so many things that have been legalized in, the, in our nation, not only in Kenya, all the nations of the world, and yet they are seen. For example, when we talk of abortion, is it righteous? Has it been legalized? Yes, that is seen before the Lord. When you talk about homosexuality, is it seen? Is it righteous? Is it legalized? Yes. So we are not better off than those people. Do we talk about even corruption? Is corruption good? But it, has, it is the order of the day. Even you find it wherever, be it in church, be it in the nation, with the work everywhere. Corruption is there. It is like, and it has become like, a, it has become like anything. You know, nikama tu kawaida. And God is not happy about such things. And so you find that these people, although we are talking about the, those people, we are, even us as a church, the days that we are living in, there is so much that has been done that has been legalized that we are accept, uh, accepting in our lives. What if we come so closer to yourself or we come closer home? What are the, those secret sins that you premeditate and say, Ata nikifanya hii, hakuna mutu wataona. We do so many things secretly thinking that hakuna mtu atatuona. Si unajijua, si ninajijua. Maybe you come to church. Yes, you are born again. And I'm telling you, the devil has nothing. He cannot fight you for coming to the church. The only thing that the devil will fight, he will make sure that you will come to church, you remain bound, and you do not get your freedom. That is the only thing he can fight. He will not, he can allow, you can come to church. That one, he does not move, he does not move the devil. Even if you come to church and you remain in sin, it does not. The only thing that can add, the devil can be worried about. Ni wakati umekuja kanisani, umesikia neno, umebadirika, umeachana na dhambi, na umeaza kuenenda na jia za mungu. Bona asifiwe. And so this time, the people, of the, it was, there was a lot of evil. And God was speaking. The same way God is speaking to us. We cannot say God is not speaking. God is speaking. He is giving warnings. But some of us, we do not want to listen. We want to continue in that comfort. We want to endele to Nadambi. I was thinking of somehow, like when we get, we get born again. But there are things, there are some addictions. Did I say that my title is We, are, we Shall Break Through? Yes, we shall break through from all those premeditated sin. Kuna kitu siku ya I was telling the Lord, may you glorify yourself. Manifest your power in this altar today. That for sure as we come to church, it's not only coming. Lakini ni kukuja, tunasikia neno. And even the, the word changes the way we believe. It changes our mindset. Bona asifiwe. Kama ni dhambi tumekua tukifanya kidogo kidogo. Yani we umeamini. Even if it's corruption. You can, do, you can do a lot of corruption. Wewe hata kama ni kwa barabara, unaweza peana hongo. Yani you can do anything. Uonangi, yani tunezoea dhambi. Atuoni dhambi kama ni kitu. But today God is telling us that he is going to help us to break through from those addictions. Somebody says, how can I get a job in this land if I don't compromise my faith? I tell you there is a way you can get a job without compromising. Bona asifiwe. There are so many things that we have put in our mindset. And this is the work of the devil, showing you, you cannot make it unless you go through these evil, or, you know, you go through these evil ways. Ways of corruption, you know, maybe, how can, I, how can I survive in this land? How can I do this? You get money in dubious ways, you don't care, you bribe, you do it, and yet you are born again. I'm telling you, it's not the only the worldly people. Even in the church, kuna iyo mazoea, bwana asifiwe. But God is encouraging us. If we are going to give ourselves to him, we shall break through. There is going to be the power, the power of our Lord Jesus. And I'm going, we, as we continue, we'll see what God did. Because God promised those people through Mika that there is going to become, there is going to be a savior. And that is how you are going to see how the, our Lord Jesus, you know, the way he came, he was born. I know he was born and he became our savior. The Messiah was sent. And through that, we see the redemption of these people. Buona Sifiwe. So it continued and uh, the Bible says in the book of Mika, if we can read Mika chapter 7. Mika chapter 7, because a lot of when we plan about sin, yani unajua kabisa, I was asking the Lord, because ata nikuwa na jiuriza, like when you come even to families. Do you know it has reached a time nowadays, every, and I was asking the Lord, if God, it is a must that you can be married to two wives. Si mimi ni meolewa. Bwana asifiwe. Then, uh, my husband gets another wife. 
and, uh, and it comes the order of the day. Because I was thinking the way nowadays, we, we are even, you know, like even it is getting legalized that you can have as many wives as you want. And I was telling the Lord, if God, you remember when God created Adam and Eve, Alimpatia, how many wives? Only one wife. But us, we, we are here reasoning and being very, as long as I'm able to take care of them, it is okay. That is a sin. Pwana asifiwe, wacha dhambi itwe nini? Itwe dhambi, diyo tuendele na, tuendele, tuenende biguni. The things that we do. Maybe the, the ungodly behaviors. Awe unajipanga kabisa unaju, I am going to do this and this. I can go, today I can, uh, I can come to the house of the Lord right now. I can go for fellowship. But in the, in the evening, I can go and do other things. I can go outside there. You don't care. You don't, if it doesn't bother you, even the kind of friends. Because I want to believe, when you got born again, there are things you say, these ones I will not do. See, kuna mambo, kuna mambo uliacha. You cannot be born again. And the same things you used to do when you are in the other kingdom, they are the same things you are doing in this kingdom. Kwani, which cost, which price are you paying for your kingdom? If Jesus endured the cross, he despised the shame. It was very painful that Jesus went through it because of us, for us to get the internal life. And now you, you have, you have, got, you have gotten born again, and yet it's like you are crucifying the Lord Jesus back on the cross because you don't want to leave those behaviors. You want to hold on to those chains. But God is saying, I'm here to break each and every chain. Don't you worry. Maybe there are addictions. You have those addictions. Maybe it is drinking. You love the Lord. I know you are born again. You love the Lord. And, but I tell you, as you, because it's a process, even as God delivers you, you will not live like that forever. A time will come. And because we have seen God saving people, a drunkards, total drunkards, and they get transformed. So you don't have to keep holding. I cannot do without alcohol. Because of my, I have some headaches. You justify. I tell you, it's time to cry to the Lord. Because God can see. God knows you better. And he loves you. But the work of the enemy is to show you that you cannot move from this addiction. The devil is watching. And he wants you to remain bound. He wants you to remain in that bondage. Because he's will, when you are in bondage, you cannot enjoy the freedom of the Lord. You will always be in fear. Ama amujui dhambi inaleta uoga. Utaku unakaa ni kama, yani you are like, kama umechanganyikiwa. Kwa nini? Kwa sababu ya dhambi. But I'm telling you, sin is bad. Sin, God hates sin. Iyo pre, yani ile, kama iyo tumesoma, there, those people who out there are doing. Walikuwa najua, leo nitaenda. Kama nikijana, nitaenda, nichukue hui msichana. Nitaenda nifanya usherati. Nitafanya, hakuna mtu wataniona. Sinitaoga na nirudi kanisani. You know, you do sin. All those things God can see. And God is saying, today, he is here to deliver you. There is no addiction that he cannot break. And you receive the power of the breaker. If I was to name another title for my message, I could have said the, the breaker's anointing. Because it is the anointing that we need in these days. The devil is not worried about you address so much about the things that you do. You know, you are, he is worried. He's, the only thing anarenga ni kuona we umeka umefungwa, umeshindwa kabisa, kabisa kuachana na dhambi, and he want, that is where he wants to drive. But thank God, because God is together with us. Now, uh, I want us to read uh, Mika chapter 7, verse 18 to 19. Who is God like you? Now, we can read this one together. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. You see that, that sea of sin, where all sins are, God is a merciful God. He is God who is full of compassion. He loves us, you know, unconditionally. And he accepts us the way we are. So for us to enjoy the breakthrough, for us to, to be in the level that God wants us to be, we must be ready to repent our... 
We repent our sins and we turn around. And we ask the Lord for his mercy. We ask the Lord for his grace because he's about to do us great and mighty things. Remember, we are still in our theme. The theme of our church is uh, threshing the mountains. We are threshing the mountains. And the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 41:14 uh, 14, 14, that I am going to help you. Maybe you can project that for us. Isaiah 41, verse 14. God has promised to help us. And God knew, I am promising this divine help. Kwa sababu mimi peke yangu, mimi kama sarume, siwezi ishi katika maisha ya uhaki, siwezi ishi katika utakatifu. The things that we are, we are going through, what is happening in this world, whatever from coming out of the church there, uneza kutana na thambi mingi sana. But God is telling us, don't you worry. Oh, warm Jacob. You can put that verse. I am there to help you. Fear not, you warm Jacob. You men of Israel, I will help you, says the Lord. And we'll continue holding on to this word. Because it's a promise that God gave us at the beginning of this year. That he's going to help us in all our weaknesses. In all the things that are, you know, that are bothering us or troubling us. God is coming to help us. Is that sin you have been fighting with? That addiction, whatever it is, you know it. God is going to help you. He's going to give you that, that enablement. And you'll be able, if only you call on him, you cry to him. Unamwambia mi mungu ni mejaribu, ni kweri na kupenda, lakini hii imenishinda. But God is saying, I'm, I'm bringing what? Divine help. And you see, when God, is going to, when God brings this divine help, it is, going to, it is going to set us free. That verse we have read about Mika chapter 12 and 13. God brought hope to his people. You can return uh, that verse again. Our first, the beginning, uh, Micah 12, 13. God was promising that he is going to call again these people. At our letter, Pamoja, I will surely assemble all of you. And when we read that, know that God is speaking to you and me. I will surely assemble. Who, who are the people God is going to assemble? The church, the body of Christ. Though Though all these things had happened, we have done all the premeditated sin. We had sinned against the Lord. And because of repentance, I will surely assemble all of you. I will surely gather the remnant. Remember, all the time, God has his remnant. Mungu anakuanga na mapaki wake. Mwana asifiwe. And God is saying, I will put them together. What does that tell you? They were scattered. They were, they were, there was no oneness because of sin. If there is anything that the devil uses to put his people in bondage, it is sin. And that's why the book, I think it's the book of Psalms 126. If I'm, yes, 126, where the Bible says, when the Lord uh, turned around the captivity of Israel, we were like the people... When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dreamt our dream. It was like a dream. And so God was promising, I am going to bring these people together. I will, I'm going to restore them. I'm going to bring them back to my fold. You know, the sheep, you know, the sheep and the shepherd. I remember another time we were taught about God is my shepherd, I shall not want. And so God is promising through Micah. Remember, these are the prophecies that God is giving to Micah. And he's telling him, tell the people, I will assemble. Let's go, return back the verse. I will assemble my remnant. I will surely assemble. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together like sheep of the fold. Like a flock in the midst of their pastor. They shall make loud noise because of so many people. That is God promising restoration. God is giving his people faith. Ah, God is giving his, yeah, he's giving them faith. That it is not all gone. There is hope. I'll assemble you because God is a merciful God. So we lay that he's a merciful God. He forgives our iniquities. So God is speaking again and he's saying, I will surely assemble all of you. Oh, Jacob, I'll surely gather. Nitawaleta tena pamoja. And that is why we are here today. God is here to do us good. He's here to, to help us break from all those addictions. Break from all the things that we have been carrying hold of. The baggages. You know those bondages. God, and I'm telling you, because most of the things that God will do, when he, he's going to, you can give us verse 13 in KJ, uh, um, give us in KJV version, verse 13, where we are going, this is where now the title of my message. The breaker, uh, I want the one that says there's going to be a mighty breakthrough. Uh, you can... Um, that is NIV. Can we like look? Uh, can we try? Can you give KJV the one that is talking about a mighty breakthrough? Uh, 
um, the breaker is come. I'm not that one. New King James, yes. The breaker is come up. Uh, do you have the New King James? The, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. I know they are working on that. Yes, but it's all the same. The one who breaks open will come up before them. The one who breaks. And who is this we are talking about? Remember, God promised to release a savior. And uh, the Bible says, your leader will break out. Who is this leader we are talking about? We are talking about the Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one who, is the one who breaks. He is the breaker of all the addictions. He is our savior. He is the way. The Bible says he is the way, the truth, and the life. And that is why Jesus came. The word of God says in, in 1 John 3.8, for this purpose, that the Son of God manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Why did Jesus come? He came to destroy all those bondages, all those strongholds, all those evil things that were happening, all those evil things that, that bother his people. That is why Jesus, he left all the glory in heaven. That is the gift that we were given, the Lord Jesus Christ. He came and died on the cross. He went through the way of the cross for you and me. That his power, through his power, the Bible says he manifested Arikuja so that he may destroy all the works of the devil. I don't, I don't, I, I think, why do you remain bound? And yet Jesus did it all on the cross. He paid the, the price for us. He overcame for us. He manifested to destroy all the works of the enemy. We can no longer be bound. And that is why we have sung and say to break every yoke, to break every chain. Because God wants us to be free. And uh, the, uh, when we think about the, those, another thing that the, the enemy drives, and I was really feeling it, it is our mindset. Unona, he anachezea our mindset, the way we think. You know a stronghold, a stronghold is something that is, it's like a belief system. Kuna vitu, maybe we will yamini too. You just believe that these things, they are supposed to be like this. And it became a stronghold for you. And those strongholds, they continue in, you continue living in those strongholds until they become as if they are the truth. And yes, it is not the truth. You believed, you know somebody, it's like you believed you cannot make it, you are not good for nothing, you are, you are, your life is doomed, you cannot, you know those things, the, the mindset, the strongholds. Shaitani amekuonyesha kabisa, you you have to remain in that condition forever. But God is saying, I am here to give you an, a, a, a positive or a clean mindset. I am here to tell you that you can live a life that you are not, you can live a righteous life. You can make it, all those strongholds. And you see, when you are in sin, sin has a lot of consequences. Sin brings a lot of, you know, a lot of evil. Sin not, not only hinders you from becoming the intended of the Lord, like in Zambi, in Akuletea, Ata Magonjwa, in Akuletea Maovu. Yani, you know, calamity after calamity. And that is why the, the children of Israel, they were like, you know, when God comes and breaks that captivity, your bondage. Now, when we read in verse 13, you are going, we are going to read uh, Mika 2, 13, you are going to see the work of the breaker. He is coming, our Lord Jesus. This anointing that, 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 that is upon the breaker, it is to break all this captivity. Hizo vitu zimekua zikitushika. Hizo vitu zimekua zikitushika becoming what God wants us to become. The one who breaks open will come up before them. They will break out, pass through the gate. You can imagine a gate. Just imagine like, a, like that gate, that, that door there. Let's imagine all the doors here are closed. There is no way we can go out. And this is, I want you to see the, the, what it means when they, they are being told, you will break out, pass through that gate. Because a gate, a gate, when it is not open, when there is a gate that is ahead of you, even as long as you are born again, na kuna lango, kuna mahari awezi pita. Sini ukweli, you cannot move when there is a gate ahead of you. But the prophet of God, through, uh, the prophet of God, Micah, was telling them, they will break out, pass through the gate and go out by it. And because of God, because he's the breaker of every stronghold, he's the breaker of every, uh, every addiction, he is going to break that gate for you and you are going to come out with the power and you are going to come out. 
Bwana asifiwe. Maybe you have believed there is nothing. Hakuna kitu. You know it's like what would it shake you are like it can only be like this. I'm telling you there is hope in the house of the Lord. Amen. There is the breaker's anointing. Amen. This anointing will help us to break through. You are going to break through that addiction. You are going to break through that limitation. Amen. Because this is what the enemy is fighting. And that is why God is so faithful. He gave us the word. You will thresh those mountains. You will thresh them and they will become a chaff under your feet. And I'm going to give you a word in the book of Isaiah 49, 11. This word was encouraging me. Isaiah 49, verse 11. Can we read that verse? I will make each. Yes, let it remain. I will make each of my mountains a road. Hallelujah. Yes, I will make each of my mountains a road and my highways shall be elevated. And I thank God. When I think about it, I just remembered, uh, I don't know whether I said that I honor the anointing of God in the house. I honor our bishop, our mom, even for the privilege of standing and ministering to the people of God. And I honor the, all the pastors in the house of God, and the ministers in the house of God. It is an honor even to stand here. And when I was thinking about the, uh, this, this word, Isaiah 49, 11, I make each of my mountains a road. You can imagine the way Bishop was telling us, you know, about the, about the mountains. Because we say the, the theme is we are threshing the mountains. And the word of God was telling me, I had not seen this verse. But when I saw it, I was like, God, you are going to make my mountain a road. Imagine Murima. Can you able picture a mountain? That mountain, is, it's a big thing. Then God is saying it is going to be a road. That you and me, we are going to walk on that mountain. You will walk on that mountain. Yani nikuwa mlima, ni kama, let's say you are bound in, you are bound in poverty. Let me use that word. You are bound in poverty. Yani wewe maishako, the devil fights your prosperity. Because he knows when you prosper, when you break out, the church will rise. The Bible says God delights in the prosperity of his. Also the Bible says when the righteous reign, people rejoice. And that is why you see the devil always fights the people of God. Because he knows when this one, those one, these ones who have known the truth, when they break out, when they take possession, when they have the power, the church will rise. The church will, will benefit. And so he fights. But look at our God. He's so powerful. He's saying, this mountain, you will walk. He's going to make it a road. Let it remain there. Barabara. That you know you see yourself now having prospered so much. Having God having done great things for you. And then you are walking. God has made you know you had, you, every dream because you have said he's going to turn around the captivity. And then you are going to, you are going to have that power. That power, you will walk, you will walk on that, that mountain will become a road. Is it sickness? Because also the devil knows, if I don't touch your, if I don't touch your finances, I don't, I'm going to touch your health. Because you know, when you are, not, when you are not, you are not healthy, you cannot serve the Lord. I cannot stand here if I am sick. Sindio. But the devil is a liar. The Bible says, this reason, God manifested his son, that he may destroy the works of the devil. So that sickness that have been holding you captive, God is saying, I'm here to heal you today. I'm here to deliver you today. Deliverance is taking place in this house. I am here to tell your partner, God is here to release us. Yes, be it your education. Maybe you are like, what will become of me? Maybe you are great. Are not, you know, when you think and you are like, I am very far from it. God is saying, I'm well able to make you. Maybe you are here, it is marriage. And you are like, God, I've waited for so long. When will this mountain be threshed? God is saying, I'm making a partner for you. You are going to break through. As long as you are walking, you are going to break out from that singlehood. If you are desiring a family, God is able to give you. Be it children, God is able to, to bless you with children. There is nothing impossible with our God. As I encourage you, I'm encouraging myself that we serve a mighty God. But the problem is, this way, the power in the name of Jesus. And when Pastor Millicent was here, she was, you know, she, when she was praying and, uh, and telling us, you know, there is nothing impossible with our God. To him, there is no impossibility. We can ask him anything. We can pray. We can become the intended of the Lord. Because he's saying, you are going to break through. And my highway shall be elevated. 
I was asking the Lord, what is an highway? You know, it's like super highway, thick highway, you know? And when you think of a highway, soon that you know, you know, you know, you jam. You know, you know, you know, jam. Mungu anaondoa jam zote. He removes every, you know, every, he removes every obstacle that you may pass. God is making a highway for me. I don't know how he's going to maneuver it, but he's going to make a highway until I become, until I go to the level that God wants me to be. It doesn't matter. I know we are in a battlefield. As long as you are born again, you are in a battlefield. You cannot, you are in a battlefield because as long as you said now it is Jesus and Jesus himself, you uri, uri tangaza vita. Uri tangaza vita. But what are we going to do? We will continue holding on to the Lord. Uh, I, want, I want to read a verse in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3 verse 11. Because we are going to pray and we are going to ask the Lord to release us. We are going to ask the Lord to help us. To set, you know, to believe in him. We are going to tell the Lord, forgive me the sins that I have been doing. Secret, you didn't know that is sin. But Lord, because it has annoyed you, forgive me, Lord. And from today, I want to, to, take, I, I want to take another, you know, Alivas, I want to change. I want a total transformation for me because I want to break through. I want this breaker's anointing to be on me. That even when I go to my workplace, people, whenever I, wherever I be, I may be able to cause impact. Praise the name of the Lord. When I was thinking about the scene in the Garden of Eden, uh, the Bible says when God, when there was that sin that happened when they ate the, the forbidden, uh, the fruit, and God called upon Adam, and he asked Adam, uh, where are you? You can, uh, you, can, you can start from verse 10. Let's start from verse 10. And he's, verse 10, so he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. I was afraid because I was naked. Verse 11, when I hide myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Ebu ask you, you are, you are a partner, who told you you are naked? Munona vile dhambi nimbaya. When you do sin, unajuekelea vitu. And God was asking Adam, who told you you are naked? Who told you you are naked? Because how do, who told you you are naked? And it's because of the sin that Adam and Eve they had done. And so they were like, when, when the God called upon Adam, he said, and he said, who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten? And then God asked him that question. But I want you to see the things that sin makes us do. None of it in atufanya to And then they bow in zinakufunga. They bind you, any, your mindset. Because you, you, you believe, you believe such a lie. You know there is a way you can believe a lie until you empower the liar. You know, some of us, maybe we, we think the devil is so powerful. I want to make an announcement. The devil is not powerful. Imagine he's right under your feet. The devil is not powerful. He has nothing of his own. He has nothing. Even the time he was attacking Job, remember he asked for permission from the Lord. The devil is not powerful. We cannot, the power of the cross, what Jesus did on the cross, he conquered everything for us. There is no part, unless we release ourselves to sin. You see, for Adam and Eve, it is sin that made them to know that they, they were naked. And God was asking Adam, who told you you are naked? Because there are things you do, you, believe, you have believed so much that I cannot make it. I am not good enough. Others are better than me. I cannot make it. Yani we umejirimit, umejirimit, umejirimit. Buana asifiwe, I am here to tell you that the breaker's anointing. It is going to break each and every yoke. Each and every bondage. That mind saying that I am not good enough. I cannot make it. I ca Those things, you know, they are strongholds. Now, umeziamini, yani umeziamini, likuwa nauna, yani watu wazimeshika mawazo ya watu. But the most, thi the, the things that brings all this, ile kitu inaleta, niju ya dhambi. Because that's how they started saying, I saw I was naked and I hide. You see how bad the sin is, Bwana Asifiwe. So God is telling us that he's going, to, he's going to release such an anointing for us. He's there to break each and, every, each and every yoke. And he's going to turn every captivity around for us. He's going to make a highway for us. There's going to be deliverance. There is going to be healing in the house of the Lord. And so I want us to just to rise up. Praise and worship, you can come in front. We want to surrender all to the Lord. 
We want to let, ask the Lord to release this anointing, the breaker's anointing, that this anointing of God may free every addiction. This anointing may help us become the intended of the Lord, that we are not going to live in sin anymore. We are not going to call that which is evil. We are not going to justify it. We will say, this is sin, it's not an issue, it is a sin, and I'm going to leave it because I want to live a righteous life. You know yourself better, and I want us to surrender to the Lord. I want us to release ourselves before the Lord. Just ask the Lord to have mercy on you. The Bible says the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. And I want us to release ourselves to the Lord. Just tell the Lord to have your respond to the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you praise, O oh God. There is nothing that is hidden that you cannot see, O oh God. Thank you because you are God and you are telling us we are going to break through. Oh Lord, we cannot break through when we are ensnared by sin. We cannot break through, O oh God, when we are not walking in your ways, O oh God. And so this morning, dear Father, we are releasing ourselves to you and we are asking you, Lord, to help help us, to have mercy on us, O oh God. You know as my Father, we have tried on our own and we have not been able, O oh God. But because you are promising us divine help, this is what we are praying for, Jehovah God. Oh Lord, I pray for mercy this morning. I pray for mercy of the Lord this morning. I pray for deliverance this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that which has been holding your people captive, we are declaring freedom today. We are declaring liberty today. In the mighty name of Jesus, Christ, because God, you have promised us, oh God, in your word, that Jesus you are manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And so this morning, we thank you for the power of the cross. We thank you, Jesus, because you conquered for us. Oh God, we know that as we as we break through, we are going to get hold of our restoration, oh God. Oh yes, in our restoration is coming. Our restoration is coming. Lord, you are restoring us, oh God. You are restoring everything that belongs to us. That which even the enemy have stolen because of sin. That evil mindset that the enemy has stolen. That stronghold, that mindset, that negative mindset that the enemy has put in us, showing us that we are naked. We decree and declare that we are coming out of it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory this morning. I want to call upon the ministry team member for a few minutes. Let's surrender all to the law. I tell you, you cannot break through. You cannot become the intended of the law. If you are still holding on to sin, if you are still holding on to sin, it is time to let go. It is time to release yourself to the law. Oh, Rikayanda Rabozai, Roboyenta Lalamaganda, Rikayanda Rabozai, Rikayanda Lalabozai. And if you are here, you want to give your life to the Lord. This is your high time. Don't you worry. He's saying, I'm going to help you to remain a testimony. I'm going to help you to walk in righteousness. Of your own, you cannot make it. But I am going to help you. I am going to help you. You will make it in the name of Jesus. Oh, Thank you, Lord Almighty. Because you are making our mountains, oh Lord. My God, you can see the mountains that are ahead of your people. Be it the mountain of my answers, oh God. Be it the mountains of love. Be it the mountain of sickness. Lord Almighty, as they agree with your people this morning, I pray that they are going to break out, oh God. They are going to break out from those sickness. They are going to break out from those addictions. They are going to break out from poverty. There is going, my Father, going to be abundance for your people in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Rika Yandararabo, Robo Yentalala Maganda, Rika Yandararabo Zai. You are a mighty God. You are a faithful God. You are what is forever settled in heaven. The Bible says uh, in all these things uh, we are more than conquerors through our Lord Jesus. And so Father we hold on to this. We are not going to remain in bondage. We are going to be free in the name of Jesus. We are breaking out. We are breaking out. Our families are breaking out in the name of Jesus. You are raising standards for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh hallelujah. Rika yanda. Oh Jesus, may we conquer the Lord. May there be a breakthrough. Mighty breakthrough we declare this morning. Mighty breakthrough, oh God. 
Oh, my Father, we repent this morning, the premeditated sin, where we have walked against your ways, oh God, where we have planned evil, Lord, and we have thought about it, and we have implemented, oh God, we have practiced evil, my God. May you forgive us this morning. Oh, we repent, oh God, in this first Sunday of April. We repent, oh God. We want to walk in righteousness. We want to walk in holiness. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Oh, Nikayanda Rabosai. If you are here, you are not born again. I tell you, life without Jesus, it is all in vain. You surrender your life to the Lord. Oh, the Lord is calling us. He's saying he's going to bring us back. It doesn't matter how far we had fallen, where we had gone astray. He's promising us that he's bringing us back into the fold of righteousness. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we give you praise, oh God. Oh, we glorify your name. Let the anointing break every yoke. Oh, yes. Those who are bound in poverty, those who are bound in death, those who are bound, dear Father, in the things of this life. Father, we declare liberty today according to your word. May we break through. May we break through. This is our, our, our day of breakthrough. It is our day of breakthrough, our day of healing, our day of salvation in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, receive all the glory. Receive all the glory. 